Hi, I'm here again with another SwiftPos video, but this time I'm looking at SwiftPos Touch. This is the software that you would have seen in a few of my previous videos. Um, I haven't really touched on it that much, but in this video I'm going to be talking about different ways that you can enable Clerk Security at the point of sale. At the moment I've got my terminal screen set without a Clerk login required, and that means that at the conclusion of a sale, The screen remains logged in and usable by whoever needs to use it. Now this is fine for um, anything that requires quick operation, um, particularly if you have a very small venue with only one or two clerks. You don't necessarily need to have clerk security enabled on your terminal. I'm going to have a look at the tools menu here in the top right hand corner and then in terminal settings and there's a few tabs down the side here the one I'll be looking at is clerks so here you can see all of the different options you have for clerk security at the POS at the moment I have no clerk login required and you'll notice that just beneath that you do have an option to select a default clerk and here you might like to set the default clerk to one that has particular attributes that you want to enable at that point of sale. Perhaps someone in a clerk group that doesn't have quite the same level of control um, as an administrator or something like that. Um, that's really up to you depending on what you require. You can also select uh, manual login and logout. I'm going to demonstrate how that looks now. So having enabled manual clerk login will allow you to uh, manually enter your clerk number. So one, for example, and that logs on clerk Amy. And a transaction can be done. But that clerk will remain logged in even after the conclusion of the transaction. So if another clerk comes up to the terminal and needs to use it under their own ID number, they would need to manually touch on the uh, clerk button up the top there and enter their clerk number here. And now Clara is um, logged in. If I come back to the tools menu and to clerks, I can also choose a couple of different fast clerk methods. So I'll start with fast clerk layout. And here I'll be presented with um, a kind of keyboard layout that can have clerks attributed to each individual button. So Clara is already here. If I wanted to log on another clerk, let's say Amy, I can click on one of these blank gray buttons, enter the appropriate clerk ID. And now Amy has her own key on this fast clerk layout. If I click on Amy, it logs her in without having to re-enter her number. And then Amy can make a transaction. And at the conclusion of the transaction, Amy will be logged back out and will need to either select her own button if she's doing the next transaction or the other clerk will need to select their button. With the clerk login panel as it is, we can log off a particular clerk if that clerk leaves. and then we're left with just the active clerks. I'm going to log back in as Amy and I'll navigate back to the tools menu, terminal settings and clerks and we'll have a look at the fast clerk keyboards option. I don't use this very often but we can take a look at how it works. So there's no clerk currently logged on. Before you can use this option you will need to have some fast clerk buttons programmed onto your keyboard. So I've got one here. Um, you would simply click on that button and enter the clerk that's going to be logged on. And that button will change to the name of that particular clerk. You can see they're also logged on up here. So if I look, log that clerk back off, I'll still be able to see everything on screen but I won't be able to ring up any products or begin a, a transaction until I've logged someone on.
So I'm going to navigate back to the tools menu and terminal settings and clerks. We can see that the next available option is log off when sale finalizes. This pretty much behaves like the manual login and log out, except at the conclusion of the transaction, it'll automatically log that clerk out and present the user with another log on panel. So we'll take a quick look at that. So there's my log on panel. I'm logged on as Amy. And if I do a transaction, I'll be logged off immediately. Once again, coming back to the tools menu, terminal settings and clerks. By default, authentication mode is set to don't prompt for pin. Um, you might like to use that as prompt for pin on manual logins, meaning that if the clerk logs on manually using the keyboard here, they do require a pin number as well as their clerk ID to log on. However, if they log on using something like an RF clerk reader or um, a magnetic stripe reader, something like that, then they don't necessarily need to enter their pin as well. However, coming back to the tools menu, we can also set that to prompt for pin for all logins. So in effect, that would mean that when a clerk swipes their, their card or uses their wristband to log on, they are also going to need to enter their pin number. The authentication mode and most of the other settings here are applicable to um, all of these types of clerk logons, except of course the no clerk logon. We can enable clerk auto log off after a given time, which will pretty much just log that clerk out after the terminal has been idle for a set amount of time. If you're using multiple cash draws on your terminal, you might like to prompt for cash draw assignment. Um, so cash draw one or cash draw two, whichever that clerk is responsible for managing. There is an option here to automatically hold a sale when changing a clerk. So this might be useful if a clerk is midway through a transaction, um, but needs to walk away from the terminal for a short period to do something else, perhaps get a drink or serve a meal. Um, and another clerk wants to come along and use the terminal. That clerk can just log on over the top of the existing transaction and that transaction will automatically be held so that when the first clerk comes back, that transaction will be waiting there. So I'll demonstrate that now. I'll just turn my authentication mode off. So if I log on as Amy and I start a transaction and now I need to walk away, another clerk can come along and log on and complete a transaction. Then when Amy returns to the terminal, she can log on and her transaction is sitting here waiting to be uh, finalized. Back to the tools menu. There is another option to show the clerk clock in and clock out panel. Um, we haven't really covered that, but we'll probably cover that in depth in a, in a future video. That's just this little purple button up the top here. You'll also see this option here, mask clerk ID on logon screen. If I untick that, and try to log on as a third clerk, you'll see the actual number that is entered here is not hidden anymore. The option to support multiple languages is used when the buttons on the actual keyboard have secondary languages programmed into them um, and with clerks with uh, preferred languages. I'll probably cover that in a future video um, talking about how to 
um, successfully implement multiple languages here in SwiftBoss. And the very last option is to force the clerk login screen to always have focus, meaning that um, it shouldn't ever be hidden behind the main sales screen um, for whatever reason. And there we go. That pretty much covers all of the different ways that you can handle clerk logins at the point of sale. Um, they are used to um, enhance security if that's what you require or to ensure that uh, clerks are not using other clerks login and to associate transactions with particular clerks so that we can tell who's done what transactions um, and uh, that will also generate interesting data that we can then report on in the back office. Um, that sort of stuff is something that I'll cover in a future video. Anyway, that's been clerk logons at the point of sale. I hope that's been helpful and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.